weather on the go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we're focusing in on air quality concerns with multiple states with poor air quality through the day today and into your Friday time frame. And then a ring of fire pattern with extreme heat and record high temperatures building to the south and multiple rounds of severe storms, including the potential for derechos across the northern states. We'll get into those details and we'll also preview your July 4th forecast with what to expect with your temperatures and the precipitation trends later on in today's video. But first up, we are talking about some major concerns with, with the air quality, especially up here into the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Great Lakes region, and even to some extent, the Northeast as well. All these gray outlined areas are air quality alerts. This covers the majority of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, eastward here into Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania here, parts of Kentucky, getting in towards New York State. Yeah, we have lots of states under those air quality alerts through this afternoon. And you can see the density of the air will be thick here, especially into portions of eastern Iowa, western Wisconsin, dropping southeast, especially with these deeper reds into eastern Illinois. Getting down here into the lower Ohio River Valley today, we'll start to see a little bit of that thin out across the eastern Ohio Valley as we go into tonight. But across portions of Wisconsin and Illinois, it is going to be poor air quality through the night tonight. And then as we go into Thursday tomorrow, we're definitely going to start to see some improvements across portions of the Midwest. But we'll still see some moderate air quality concerns across portions of the eastern Ohio Valley, the central. Great Lakes and down into parts of the southeast as we go into Thursday. Now the other concern and probably the bigger story is the heat. It's going to be extremely stifling hot across the southern United States. Look at these heat alerts. We In the oranges, those are heat advisories. In the pinks, those are excessive heat warnings and those cover multiple states and as far north as the Kansas City region. St. Louis and getting up toward Paducah, Kentucky as we head through the rest of this week. And the reason for that, the mechanism controlling this weather pattern is this strong anchor to upper level ridge or high pressure system across the Arklatex and Texas today. And this will remain parked across the deep south in the lower Mississippi Valley through the rest of the week as we go into tomorrow and even on Friday as well. So as such, temperatures will be stifling hot to say the least, across the southern United States. We're up to 105 this afternoon in Oklahoma City, 111 down here into Wichita Falls, 102 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area here, and even up to 104 as far north as Wichita, Kansas this afternoon with that dry air and the ongoing drought easily getting into the triple digits there. Then it spreads even further north. As we go into Thursday, we have St. Louis getting in on the triple digits in potentially as far north as the Quincy, Illinois region, Kirksville, Missouri, Kansas City getting in on the triple digits for Thursday, and the heat continues on Friday, but starting to lessen some, but we still see lots of upper 90s to low 100s across the majority of the Mississippi Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and the Gulf Coast states as we go into your Friday time frame. But the concern is the northern side of this ridge of high pressure and that big heat dome we are just talking about. You have a very strong belt of jet stream winds over the top of that here from the eastern Pacific Ocean. And then over the top of that ridge, you can see these uh, purples and pinks. That is enhanced wind shear on the northern side of this ridge. And that's going to promote more complexes of storms to develop. And this is a very classic pattern for progressive derechos. You have an anchored high pressure system across the south or the southeast. And then the airflow around that is clockwise wise and you start to see a lot of instability, a lot of wind shear and moisture, and that really helps to fuel complexes of storms called MCSs or mesoscale convective systems that then could turn into derechos and progressive derechos and move over long distances with widespread damaging winds, very large hail, and tornadoes. So going back to yesterday, these were the storm reports for your Tuesday, June 27th timeframe. We did see some extremely strong winds across the 
the panhandle of Oklahoma, even seeing a report of up to 90, 100 mile per hour winds here, even one reported tornado there in the Oklahoma panhandle. And we had 118 total wind reports, 43 hail reports, and we had 162 total severe weather reports going back to your Tuesday. And I do fear that number will be growing through the rest of the week. We have a widespread zone of marginally severe storms today across portions of the Great Plains, getting into the Midwest here and even the Western Great Lakes region. A couple of areas uh, to note for more uh, you know, enhanced severe weather potential. This is a slight risk across portions of Western Nebraska getting into Eastern Wyoming. And then we have another slight risk up toward the Twin Cities and especially into Northwestern Wisconsin, just north of the La Crosse region this afternoon and evening. And you can see this afternoon, the storms will be few and far between. So we're not seeing everybody getting storms, but if you do get under one of those stronger cells they could be producing damaging winds over 60 miles per hour large hail over quarter size and possibly even a tornado as well we'll see more coverage at least slightly more coverage into tonight especially up here to northern wisconsin as a mesoscale convective system starts to develop and drop more uh, south into portions of central, southern Wisconsin, and possibly surviving into the Chicagoland region overnight tonight into your Thursday morning time frame. And speaking of Thursday, this is probably the biggest day for severe weather this week that we do have a widespread slight risk here. This is the new update from the Storm Prediction Center this afternoon. Has that slight risk here just east of the Denver region, Cheyenne, Wyoming the North Platte region, all the way east through portions of Springfield, Illinois, Chicago, Indianapolis, and then diving southeast into the Louisville region as we go into your Thursday time frame tomorrow. And what this could bring is some damaging winds on a widespread scale. Now, the Storm Prediction Center does not have a hatched area for winds, but I do think that could be added, especially into the Midwest and Ohio Valley as we go further into tomorrow's updates, as there are signs that we could have a direct ratio pattern setting up as early as tomorrow but the threat will be there for some significant hail of two inches or larger in diameter. So we're talking golf ball size, tennis ball, baseball size hail, especially in toward portions of southeast Iowa, northeastern Missouri, much of Illinois, including Chicago and Springfield, and then getting eastward from there into western portions of Indiana and Indianapolis and the Evansville region as well on Thursday. And the tornado threat is formidable as well in downstate Illinois and in Indiana, we could have a 5% shading for tornadoes there into Springfield, getting down into the Mount Vernon region and even into Evansville, Indiana, as we go into your Thursday time frame, even a slight chance of a tornado over here and toward the Rapid City, Cheyenne, and North Platte region as we go into your Thursday afternoon and evening. So looking at the differences in the models, there still are considerable differences, even though we are a day out. These patterns, this ring of fire pattern, is very highly variable each day. So every time we see a convective system move through, it will push that a little bit further to the south here as we have those outflow boundaries pushing further to the south. So looking at the 12 z h R. This is your CAPE, convective available potential energy. Still shows some moderate to strong values getting up there into Iowa, Illinois, and Missouri. But in comparison, the 12Z NAM for CAPE is much stronger and more extreme with values up to 6,000 joules per kilogram up into western Illinois and eastern Iowa. So there still is variability in how strong the energy and instability will be on Thursday. And that does directly affect the mode of severe weather. So the HRRR shows more of an isolated severe weather threat for the most part across the Midwest, back into the Central Plains and the Ohio Valley. This is by early Thursday evening. And we have a little bit more of a cap on the atmosphere, preventing a lot of those storms from becoming very widespread. But in comparison, the 12Z NAM has a stronger convective system or derecho trying to develop across Iowa, northern Missouri, and crashing into Illinois southeastern Wisconsin and then eventually diving southeast through the Indiana region into Ohio and Kentucky overnight Thursday into your Friday morning. So these small differences will make a big difference when we go into the day tomorrow, see what model 
does start to play out will definitely uh, make the whole difference in what the forecast will be tomorrow. But going into Friday, we will have more of the same with the northern periphery of that ridge with more severe weather on Friday, especially with that slight risk from Indianapolis through the Cincinnati region and getting in towards Charleston, West Virginia as we go into Friday. But overall, through the rest of the work week, this is the zone we'll be paying attention for for some heavier rain, especially back into Nebraska, northeastern portions of Colorado. Colorado, southeastern Wyoming, getting into northwest Kansas. That's the heaviest area for precipitation with rainfall generally one to three inches, but we could be seeing some decent rains further east depending on how the system evolves over the next couple of days. We could be seeing pockets of an inch plus of rainfall here into Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and even West Virginia as well as we go through that Saturday morning time frame. But we do have a pattern change in the offing starting this weekend. We have that ridge, like I said, late this week across portions of the lower Mississippi Valley. That will start to dampen and move further to the south as we have that, you know, MCS pattern kind of squashing that ridge by the weekend. And then we have a new ridge of high pressure building into the Pacific Northwest as early as Saturday, July 1st. And that will actually take us through the first full week of July as well, going into the following week on Monday, July 3rd, as that heat really starts to billow up across the western United States. So taking you through the weekend time frame, you still see the heat down across the Gulf Coast. It's still going to be there, but it's not going to be as stifling hot as what we have been seeing over the past you know, couple of days here. But as we go into Sunday, we'll start to build that heat a little bit further across the west and start to get rid of that heat further to the south as we go into Sunday, and then as we go into Monday, that time frame, more typical summer heat across the Midwest, getting down into the Central Plains. There could be some triple digits here into the Carolinas and along the Gulf Coast, and especially down here in the desert Southwest, but nothing we cannot handle this time of year as we're getting closer to the dog days of summer there. And looking first here at your Tuesday time frame, disregard where it says precipitation, that's supposed to say high temperatures, uh, but on Tuesday, July 4th, we are going to be heating up. Another ridge tries to develop towards next week, and then you start to see more 90s pushing northward. The Twin Cities region, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Chicago, Green Bay, getting into Des Moines. You get the picture. It's going to be getting hot yet again for July 4th. When you factor in those dew points and the moisture, the heat index values will be well into the 90s, if not the triple digits, especially down here in Dallas-Fort Worth. 103 on July 4th, 100 in Tyler, Texas, 105 in Shreveport, 101 in Lake Charles. So it will be pretty hot as we go into July 4th. And looking at precipitation trends, it does look like there will be more coverage of showers and storms, especially peak daytime heating Tuesday afternoon and evening down here across the lower Mississippi Valley and the southeast. But other than that, pretty quiet. Maybe some showers and storms across the far northern Midwestern regions into northern Minnesota and eastern North Dakota. A couple showers across the interior New England as well. Other than that most of the west with the influence of that strong high pressure system will be mostly dry going through your July 4th time frame. But as we get beyond July 4th, the middle and late portion of next week into the following weekend, it's going to start to come back with the heat across Texas here. So that ridge of high pressure will build back north from Mexico into the Southern Plains and will start to shut off more of that heat across the West Coast. And we start to see more average to slightly below average precipitation at first and then trending more above average with our rainfall across the Great Plains here, especially down into the Southern Plains and lower Mississippi Valley during that Wednesday, July 5th through Tuesday, July 11th time frame. And this is exactly where I do uh, picture the severe weather forecast to be. So from Wednesday, July 5th through Tuesday, July 11th, this area highlighted in yellow will be possible to see events for severe weather during that time frame, mainly with damaging winds and large hail. But I cannot rule out even a few tornado events as well during that time frame will be fine-tuning this in the days to come. Turning to the tropical weather update, we're still hanging on to a 20% chance of development over the next couple of days here in the western tropical Atlantic for a very weak system out here. It doesn't have much legs with it whatsoever. It's really running out of time. And you see a lot of these waves coming off Africa are well far to the south to do anything in the Caribbean over the next several days. So the Atlantic side, the Caribbean, the Gulf, fairly quiet for the most part over the next 7 to 10 days. 
But the same cannot be said across the eastern Pacific. We have Hurricane Adrian that has formed. Our first name system in the eastern Pacific has formed, and this is a hurricane right now. And you can see that here on visible satellite imagery. This hurricane is starting to develop. It's pretty, you know, disorganized right now. But trust me, it does pack a punch with the strong winds over the open waters of the eastern Pacific Ocean. And kind of zooming this out a little bit, there's another wave behind that that could be close to the Mexico coast as we go through towards this weekend. That has a 90% chance of developing a little bit closer to the Mexico coast here. So looking at the European model, the ECMWF, this is the 850 millibar wind. This is the low level wind in the atmosphere. There's Adrian here off to the left. That's going to be moving over the open water, not affecting any land whatsoever through Friday. But by the Friday time frame to close out the month of June, we have our next system starting to develop here right near the coast of Mexico. And that looks to take a coastal track here towards portions of the Baja of California and starting to weaken as well as it does encounter some very cool waters over here as we get to that Sunday, July 2nd time frame. And the GFS, the American model, has a fairly similar track, but it is a little bit more biased with keeping this stronger longer. I do think the European model does a great job in kind of you know leveling off its intensity as we go into later on this weekend as the waters west of the Baja of California are much cooler so it likely will weaken by that time frame. Well if you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America including southern Canada, the United States and the tropics like I was just showing you be sure to subscribe to the channel down below. I do this every single day for the most part. And it is absolutely free to subscribe down below. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's also very important to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. If you did like today's video and you want more of these detailed weather forecasts, press that like button down below. It is much appreciated and it does help out more than you know. If you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates, hit the description down below the video and follow me on Twitter at HWeather420. I do appreciate that. With a lot of these severe weather events going on over the next couple of days. I will be updating you guys with updates on Twitter on that as well. And also with these videos coming up with the weather pattern so active, it may take me a little bit longer to do these videos getting into the early afternoon hours, but I promise you I'm getting the most up-to-date information as possible and giving it to you guys here right on air. So I appreciate you guys covering here the severe weather with me today. I appreciate it. Hope everybody's having a great Wednesday out there. Again, remember to subscribe, like the video down below, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today and turn on post notifications. If I do go live or I have another video coming out, for example, tomorrow, then you will be able to get that with uh, notifications turned on. Well, have a great rest of your Wednesday, everybody, and I will see you all in the next video.